Hello everyone. So today we will discuss chapter number two of Internet Security course. Uh, chapter is about data encryption schemes and specifically we will discuss classical techniques of uh, symmetric encryption algorithms and we will also discuss uh, random number generators and asymmetric, asymmetric encryption. So uh, in the first part of this video, like in this video, what we're going to cover is we will discuss uh, definition of cryptography and types of cryptography like based on their functionality. Uh, then we will discuss uh, symmetric encryption. Specifically in symmetric encryption, we will be discussing two types of uh, encryption schemes. First is the conventional or you can say classical techniques. And then second is we will discuss some modern uh, techniques, encryption techniques and encryption algorithms. In classical techniques, we will be mainly focused on two main types of encryption schemes. One is the substitution, substitution cipher. And second is the transposition cipher. Transposition cipher. In substitution, we are going to discuss two types of substitution cipher schemes. One is the Caesar cipher and second is going to be S-box. Substitution boxes, how we can create substitution boxes and that's very, very important because we use these substitution boxes in advanced algorithms that we use today. For example, DES, AES, triple DES, uh, including IDEA, Blowfish, RC, uh, Rhone cipher algorithms. These algorithms, they do use the substitution boxes. In the transposition, we are going to discuss uh, two types of transposition scheme. One is the row transposition. And second is going to be the permutation schemes. We will discuss them in detail with some examples so you guys can better understand these concepts because the classical or these conventional methods, we still use these methods in our modern algorithms. Uh, in the modern techniques, uh, uh, for the modern techniques, we will discuss what is basically stream cipher, like stream symmetric ciphers and the block ciphers. These are the two main schemes. We'll discuss their difference uh, and how they can be used. And in the block cipher scheme, uh, there are many block cipher algorithms that we currently use. Uh, we will discuss DES and AES, like the functionalities of DES, how exactly it works, how to create keys and all that stuff. And uh, specifically, uh, just to make you guys understand how these algorithms actually work, we will be discussing triple DES. Uh, sorry, simplified DES. Simplified DES, because actually uh, DES, AES, triple DES, these algorithms are very, uh, I mean, these are huge algorithms. Uh, with like 64 bit of data, 128 bit of data. So it's it's quite hard to make you understand that, that long bit number of bits. So we will be discussing simplified DES where we will use eight bits of input or you can say the plain text and 10 bits of the key. Okay. Uh, random number generators, asymmetric encryption. This is basically what we're going to discuss in our part two, including the DES and AES because I mean, it's it's a lot of things uh, uh, on the plate of part one. So today we're going to discuss the first part, definition of cryptography and types of cryptography. Then in the second part, uh, we will discuss symmetric encryption, classical technique, modern techniques. I'll give you idea of that stream cipher and block cipher. Uh, and for example, um, uh, because I'm just recording the video, I don't know how long it's it's going to take. So I'll I'll see if the video is taking too long so then i will actually move the des and aes discussion i'll just move this discussion to part two otherwise we will discuss uh, at least these two agenda items today but I'll, I'll i'll try to cover at least uh at least i'll try to cover up, up to block cipher and then we will discuss these for in the next part if time permits so let's move on to the first agenda item the first part of uh, chapter number two part one the first agenda item it's definition of cryptography and types of cryptography so uh, definition of cryptography, uh, first of all, if you want to understand from where this word cryptography came from and how exactly it, 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 it actually works. So first of all, we need to understand actually the main field is cryptology. So cryptology is basically a main field which encompasses cryptography, which encompasses cryptography plus script analysis. So what is cryptography? Cryptography, the word cryptography, uh, it, it's basically came, uh, came from a Greek letter, krypton graphene. So krypton graphene, 
क्रिप्टोमीन सीक्रेट एंड ग्रेफीन मीन राइटिंग सो आर्ट ऑफ सीक्रेट राइटिंग इज कॉल्ड क्रिप्टोग्राफी इन और सिंपली वी कैन से मेकिंग ऑफ सीक्रेट कोड्स मेकिंग ऑफ सीक्रेट कोड इज कॉल्ड क्रिप्टोग्राफी लाइक प्रोसेस ऑफ मेकिंग सीक्रेट कोड क्रिप्ट एनालिसिस इज वाइल ब्रेकिंग ऑफ सीक्रेट कोड्स ब्रेकिंग ऑफ सीक्रेट कोड्स so breaking of secret code is called or finding vulnerabilities in the systems is called crypt analysis uh so if we we discuss cryptography in detail like what kind of secret codes we design and stuff like that so cryptography mainly provide three things so we can actually mainly achieve three things with cryptography so if you look at the cryptography we can get uh confidentiality confidentiality we can actually get uh we can say integrity with cryptography we can achieve authentication with cryptography these are the three main things that we can get uh through cryptography uh, non repudiation is also a part of it I'll, i'll i'll discuss that so uh for confidentiality there are two type confidentiality i believe you guys know the definitions confidentiality ensures only legitimate people can read the data or the contents of the message while integrity is basically only authorized people can make modification in the message authentication it ensures the individual who is trying to access the system he is the one who is i mean who is legitimate guy in fact not imposter so for confidentiality uh, mainly there are two types of uh, algorithms or the you can say the uh, the schemes in fact one is called symmetric encryption that we we will be discussing today second is called asymmetric i hope you guys already know the difference between them i just want to actually sketch uh, all the you know the objectives or you can say uh, the functions of cryptography so you you can actually differentiate between different uh, coding scheme of cryptography so symmetric means for example let's say if we use sender and receiver both use the same key so they will use just one key single key or they can use a group of keys maybe 10 20 or 30 keys but all those group of keys and the same the key a uh, single key if, in fact will be same like both sender and receiver they will use the same key so symmetric encryption it can be a single key like single key both sender and receiver they will have single secret key that's a secret key or it could be a group of keys group of keys like secret key but both sender and receiver they will have the same secret keys uh the example of these metric algorithms are des it's uh, triple des uh aes these are the three different standard standardized algorithms that we will be discussing as well asymmetric it's basically where we use pair of keys pair of keys are used uh we use like public key like each user will have two keys public key and private key and these two keys public and private keys are basically interdependent let's say like what does it mean public mean the key which is publicly available to anybody so for example i am a user for example alice is a user so alice she will have two keys her public key which is known to everybody and private key which is only known to alice so uh with the uh, uh, if anybody wants to send a message to ls they will use ls public key because it is publicly accessible and encrypt the message if nobody can decrypt that because if you encrypt anything by using someone's public key can be decrypted by that person's private key okay or otherwise if you encrypt anything by using someone's private key it can be decrypted by using that person's public key so it's it's basically what asymmetric encryption is and that's basically what we use on tls transport layer security um https over the web that's basically what we use uh algorithms are rsa most of the companies they still use rsa uh another algorithm is diffie hellman for secret key exchange we will be discussing that as well and there is another algorithm which is called ecc elliptical curve cryptography which is basically uh, a mathematical kind of algorithm like the graphical and plus mathematical like geometry uh, and some some other uh, trigonometric relationships are involved uh one of the best thing or best part of asymmetric encryption is with asymmetric encryption you can actually provide non repudiation 
non repudiation is basically uh, the users they cannot disown their actions why Be by using asymmetric encryption we can actually provide digital signatures we will discuss that what is digital signature in detail now let's come to the second type of uh, cryptographical algorithms and that's basically provide integrity like uh, only legitimate people they can actually uh, you can say uh, they can only modify the data or make modifications to how we can ensure integrity there are some hash functions we use hash functions hash algorithms or hash functions which are basically one way like if you calculate a hash value of something you cannot retrieve the message out of that hash value so we only use hash values for integrity not for confidentiality encryption and decryption just to protect integrity uh, and again it provides you fixed size output like regardless of what is the length of your uh, input is it will give you based on the algorithm it will give you a fixed size of output uh, examples are SHA simple hash algorithm series 1 SHA 3 256 512 etc etc simple hash algorithms MD series where we have MD1 MD2 MD4 MD5 message digest that's the name another type of uh, hash algorithms are basically HMAC it's basically hash hash based message authentication code it provides you integrity plus authentication both we will discuss that uh, it's it's, the, it's over next chapter uh, other than that uh, for integrity some people they use crc cyclic redundancy check that's another way to protect that uh, to protect the integrity if we come to authentication uh, to provide authentication of course we can use hmac Beside HMAC, there are basically some authentication functions like uh, we can actually achieve authentication through uh, a scheme which is called Kerberos. So Kerberos is basically one of the scheme that we, we have started using to provide authentication like a web authentication. We will discuss that. And typically we use it in a, um, for example, if a company offers or uses, uh, let's say, multiple vendors product, we use Kerberos typically. Another one is OpenID. That's another scheme for authentication. Another function is the OAuth. OAuth 2.0 is basically the, the one which we are currently using. We will discuss all of them, of course, when we get to authentication section. In this particular chapter, we're going to actually discuss this part of cryptography, like this part, confidentiality. That's the part we, we're going to discuss in over uh, this chapter. Okay, Integrity, we will discuss it in the next chapter. Authentication, that's uh, the next chapter as well. So let's uh, move on to the second uh, definition, which is the crypt analysis. What are the different ways to perform crypt analysis, breaking codes or how to find vulnerabilities? So for crypt analysis, if you talk about crypt analysis, there are mainly uh, two techniques to perform crypt analysis. One of the one technique, which is more formal, we, we call it basically using some formal models or we also call it structural methods like structural crypt analysis method second is called ad hoc schemes so uh, formal models to perform crypt analysis is uh, tango attack tango model rlc recursive re linear crypt analysis recursive linear crypt analysis that's another formal model Another model is the RDC, recursive differential. So everything else is same, differential, crypt analysis. Another model is the Grobner basis, which is more mathematical. Uh, ad hoc based scheme are basically like attacker, uh, they just actually crack the code. Like for example, they are randomly tried some different techniques so it's not basically kind of a generic model, a specific model, or you can say specific attack scheme, which uh, which they which can only uh, you know crack the one type of algorithm, like one algorithm, not extensible to a broader class of algorithm, because by using these schemes, you, they they have a structural model, and you can apply that model on any algorithm. Ad hoc schemes are basically specific to only one algorithm specific to only one algorithm 
not extensible or you can say we cannot extend that extensible to a broader class of algorithms like you cannot actually apply to test all the let's say algorithms it's just a specific attack i mean it could be for example sometime some people they can say it's basically guesswork it's kind of a guesswork like attacker just got in randomly maybe so this is the first agenda item that we have discussed definition of cryptography we discuss what is cryptography what are the uh, what are the functions of cryptography we discuss that different algorithms and then we discuss what is crypt analysis and how which methods can be used to perform crypt analysis so let's move on to our second agenda item symmetric encryption we'll discuss uh, step by step we will discuss the classical and modern methods starting with the classical uh, the two techniques of classical and their methods of classical technique with some example so let's move to the classical scheme uh, symmetric encryption definition first symmetric encryption as you guys most of you guys already know and we just discussed in symmetric encryption both sender and receiver they use the same key for encryption and decryption so in symmetric encryption both sender and receiver use the same key for encryption and decryption so there is just one key or you can say a identical group of keys which sender and receiver they will use to encrypt the data and decrypt the data just to make you guys understand for example this is our sender and sender let's say sender wants to send this message hello to receiver okay so sender will use an algorithm for example something like des aes or whatever the symmetric algorithms are they will use that and each algorithm require a mathematical value which is called a key and encrypt the message let's say hello become something like ciphertext for example now nobody can uh, nobody can read the content of this message unless they know the algorithm and the private key the secret key otherwise they cannot retrieve the message when receiver will receive this message let's say we have a receiver and receiver got this cipher text so let's say receiver got this cipher text over any insecure channel or whatever the channel is going to be receiver will use the same algorithm but in a reverse order decryption and with the help of same key receiver will be able to get the plain text bar back so that's the what the overall overall uh, you can say the model of symmetric encryption what is the symmetric encryption both sender and receiver they will use same key or identical group of keys to encrypt or decrypt the message so let's move on to now the classical techniques of symmetric encryption we are right here now the classical technique okay so uh the conventional or classical technique as we discussed there are two types of classical or conventional techniques uh, for symmetric encryption uh, one is the substitution cipher substitution cipher second is the transposition cipher so substitution cipher is basically where we data will be substituted like you will use another data instead of the plain text like we will use some technique to uh, to actually use substitute the data like use something else uh, rather than the data we'll discuss that in transposition we just interleave the data change the order of the data position of the data that is called transposition uh, we will mainly discuss two substitution cipher techniques there are many techniques we, we are going to use two technique one is the caesar cipher second is called playfair cipher or you can say substitution box s box how to create substitution box and how these techniques are can be used these two methods are very important to understand because we do use these two methods in over um des and aes transposition is basically as i mentioned earlier we uh interleave the data change the order of the data like we don't substitute the data we don't use a different thing in fact it's like just change the position so transposition cipher we will discuss two types of transposition schemes one is the uh, row transposition 
road transposition and the second is going to be permutation permutation scheme there are many other transposition scheme like rail fence cipher columnar cipher etc etc but techniques are you know similar like the main idea is jumble up the data so let's start with the caesar cipher substitution cipher and let's start what is basically the caesar cipher so if you see um, i have uh, wrote down this a b c d like all the alphabets and put the number so in caesar cipher uh, it's very very simple to understand again the key key is a numeric value and we use a specific kind of function which is called mod function modulus those who don't know how to calculate a mod it's very very simple to understand for example let's say if you want to calculate a mod of uh, for example 20 mod 26 for example if the value on the left side like this is the value on the left side is smaller than the value on the right side then the answer is going to be the same like 20 is less than 26 so answer is going to be 20 if the value on the left side is greater than or equal to the value of the right side for example if it would be 31 mod 26 then we will divide the value on the left side with 26 or whatever the value on the right side and if you divide it so remainder remainder is going to be the answer so let me repeat it repeat it again if the value on the left side is smaller than the value on the right side the, the result is the value whatever the value on the right side is going to be uh, left side is going to be if the value on the left side is greater than the value on the right side then we divide the value on the left side with the right side value and just you know uh, pick the remainder so this right side is basically the boundary the limitation like the result cannot go beyond 26 in this case for example if uh, it is 100 mod for example 161 so 161 is going to be the limit answer cannot go beyond 161 that's basically the limit so this is the function that we're going to use here in our caesar cipher so in Caesar cipher, first of all, the key. Key is basically a numeric value. Uh, again, as you know, it's a symmetric encryption. So both sender and receiver, they will use the same key. We are assuming that they will exchange the key before the communication. And the value is going to be, since we have, uh, we are in the Caesar cipher, typically we use um, alphabets. So 26 are the alphabets. So that's why the maximum key value could be 26. So it could be from one all the way to 26. Typically, we start it like from zero just to avoid confusions, but I'm just actually uh, make you understand just I don't want to confuse you with zero and all. So let's start with one. What is the formula to calculate Caesar cipher? That's the formula. C is basically your cipher text. P, this P is basically your plain text or original message. This K is going to be your key. And this 26 is basically the limit because we have 26 alphabets like the alphabet number can we don't have any 27 number alphabet so the first step is i actually wrote down the whole alphabets here and put the number like a is one b is two i just assign these numbers to all alphabets so for example let's say you have uh, a plain text for example let's say just take example let's say we have a plain text for example plain text is zoo z o o that's your plain text and you have a key for example let's say key equal to four so let's say you have to calculate uh, the cipher text for this so what we're going to do is we are going to use this formula so c equals c for z like cipher text for this z alphabet z c of z is equal to what is the plain text what is the plain text number for z number of the plain text if you see the z number is 26 because we are calculating cipher text for z so 26 plus what is the key keys over four so 26 which is the plain text number because number z we will actually uh encrypt them alphabet by alphabet mod 26 so if you calculate it it's 30 mod 26 so now the number on the left side is greater than number on the right side so now what we're going to do is 30 divided by 26 4 4 is the answer and now what is the value or alphabet of 4 d if you see here d so answer is going to be d so d is basically the answer substitute like this z is will be substituted with d now for example what about o so again cipher text for o what is the number of o plain text this is plain text of o o is right here 15 
So I'm going to put 15 here. Plus, what is the key? Same formula, key is 4. Mod 26. So it's going to be 19 mod 26. So value is less than, left, 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 left value is, uh, the value on the left side is uh, smaller than the value on the right side. So answer is going to be 19. What is the number of 19? S's. So S will be the substitution value for O. Secondly, we have again O, so we don't have to calculate that. So what will be the ciphertext for zoo? Ciphertext is going to be using the key for B S S. That is going to be your ciphertext. So now, <coughs> excuse me, we can have a different, uh, you can say uh, a different key. Uh, it will generate a different number, but that's the method. If <coughs> Let's move on to this uh, Playfair cipher, or you can call it substitution box. How to create a substitution box? That's a very important thing, very important concept because we use, and you guys will see these substitution boxes over and over. Okay, so Playfair Cipher, or you can call it S box, substitution box. So our first point is we need to create, uh, understand it step by step. Let's let's break down whole process step by step. So the first step is we actually need to create a five cross five table. Let's create a five cross five table. Let me just create down here. Let's create a simple table here. Okay. Should have five rows and five columns. Okay, now. Now you can see here five by five, one, two, three, four, five rows, one, two, three, four, five columns. So it is over five cross five table. Okay, this is a specific kind of uh, substitution box. For large substitution boxes, we, we use a different method. This is just for Playfair Cypher, but that's the model typical. That's the method to create substitution boxes. So assume that, for example, we have a plain text. For example, over plain text is, let's say plain text is hello, H-E-L-L-O. For example, that's the plain text. And let's say our key is network, N-E-T-W-O. R K. For example, that's the key. Uh, task is we need to calculate cipher text. Okay, we need to calculate cipher text using substitution box or Playfair cipher. And as I mentioned, this is a substitution cipher. We will substitute the value. We will not rearrange them. Stuff like that. Okay. Uh, now, very important point. Very very important point here. Uh, firstly, <clears throat> what we do? We we actually fill our table and how to fill the table. First of all, we need to actually write down the key inside the table. Okay, we will write down the key inside the table and there should be no repetitions. Like for example, if there would be any alphabet which repeats, we have to skip that one. Since in our case, there is nothing like that. There is no repetition. Like we just have like same like NAT works. There is no repetition of any alphabet. So we are good. Uh, but again, if there would be any repetitions, the repetitions, then we have to skip that repetition. Okay. So what is basically the key network? So we will start filling the table with the key N E T W O R K. So we have a lot of spots here. So, uh, what we're going to do is we will actually fill them with the dummy values, like which dummy values, which are not used in the key. <clears throat> so complete the table with key, no repetitions, okay, there's no repetitions, and um, uh, you can say fill the, fill the remaining table entries with letters not used in key so letter which are not used in key for example in our key we don't have a if you see there is no a then we don't have b do we have c no we will put c here d starting i mean why we have, we can start from z as well but it's uh, it has to be known to your receiver as well so typically we'll start with a starting point e yes we have a e so we're gonna skip that there should be no repetition in the table 
So A, B, C, D, E will be skipped. F, we don't have F. G, we don't have G in the, in the network. H, no H. Now here's a trick. Uh, when we get to this part, we will use because five cross five, how many values we will have? Five multiplied by five, 25, but alphabets are 26. So we actually use I or J here. Like this part is for both. Uh, okay, L, do we have I, J, K? K, K is right here. So we cannot use K, L, M, O, we do have O here. So P, so definitely the next letter, Q, do we have R, R here? So we're gonna use S, T, we do have T here in the key, no repetition. U, like the next letter, V, W, we do, we do have W here. So X, Y, Z. So that's our substitution box based on our key. Again, let me repeat. The first step is you just have to complete the table, complete, I mean, start writing the table with your key and if there is any repetition, don't repeat that. Uh, fill the remaining block because network got, I mean, got here when we have a lot, lot of empty spots here. So we actually wrote down the letters which were not used in our key, like no repetition again. Okay, that's the first step. Now, in order to actually uh, calculate the ciphertext, there are five rules that we have to, that we have to consider to calculate the ciphertext, five rule. Uh, okay, the first rule is, we will divide ciphertext, oh, sorry, plain text. We will divide the plain text into pair of letters. So we will divide them into pair of letters, like for example, H, E, L, O, we will divide them pair, like H, E will be one pair, L, L will be one pair and stuff like that. Number two. Second is the, we will differentiate or differentiate, or you can say like we will actually placed, uh, place the repeated, differentiate the repeated letters in the pair, in the pair with dummy and dummy letters. So what we're gonna do is, for example, if there would be any repetition in our pair, like in our pair, we will see the repetition, LL. So what we have to do, we have to separate them, we have to differentiate them by putting a dummy value in between. We will discuss that. Number three, the third rule is if the pair, if the pair of plain text, if the plain text letters are in the same row, in the same row of the substitution box, of S box, then replace them with right most letters. For example, let's say, uh, <clears throat> let's say we have two, let's say values, L, and uh, let's say L and M. So for example, we have L and M, that's basically the values. So it will get replaced with the next letter. Like what is the letter on the right side to L? It is M. M will get replaced with the letter to the next M, P, sorry. So that's basically the rule number three. Rule number four is, for example, let's say if the pair of letters, pair of letters, like the plain text letters are in the same column, same column, then replace them with letter below. So for example, if two values in the same column, let's say we have K and let's say M, for example. So they will be replaced with the letter below them. M, K will be replaced with F, M will be replaced with V. Okay, that's uh, the, the third, uh, fourth one. The last is the, if plain text letters, I mean pair of letters are in different rows and columns, 
then the replace with the diagonal diagonal position like opposite diagonal opposite diagonal so let's use these five rules and let's see how we can actually calculate the ciphertext so let's see these rules okay now for example let's say we have uh, i'm gonna actually <clears throat> use a new sheet here okay let's start it because we're gonna use this table here so let's use uh, what was the cipher text? Cipher text was hello. What is the first step? First step is divide the plain text into pair of letters. So let's going to divide it. For example, the letters H E. Second is L L. Third is the O. Okay. Now we, uh, we, we have divided it, but the problem is the last one, it didn't get any pair. So we can put a dummy value or we, we will, we will see. Next, if you see here, uh, differentiate the repeated letter in the pair with dummy letters. So let's say if you see here, we have no repetition here, but we do have repetition here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a dummy value in between. So H E, and let's say you can pick any dummy value. I'm going to pick X. So L X and this L will go to the next group. And now you can see here, no repetition here. So what we did is, since we had the repetition in this pair, so we actually put a dummy value. This is our dummy value. And it could be any J, K, I mean, any value which is not in the in our uh, key and in our plain text. It should not be in the key in the plain text. So I pick any value. Okay. So let's see the next. Next step is the, if the pair, I mean, um, next is the just a comparisons. So let's see. So next is the, the plain text. What is the plain text? He, H, E. First of all, we need to see whether H and E, I mean, we'll see are in the same row. If they are in the same row, we'll do this. If they are in the same column, we'll do this. If they are in the different uh, uh, rows and columns, then we will replace with the diagonal. Let's understand that. So let's see H and E. Let's see whether we have H and E in the, like this is H and E. Let's see whether they are in the uh, same column and same row or not. So this is H. And where is E? E is right here. So what do you think? Whether H and E are in the same row? Of course not. This is in this row and E is in this row. Perfect. Column. This is in the fourth column, first, uh, third, second column. Perfect. No match. So then what will happen if they are not in the same row, same column, then of course they will be in the diagonal. You can see here. They are basically in the diagonal wise. Now we are going to replace them with the opposite diagonal. If you see, this is the opposite diagonal of this, like E this and opposite diagonal. So the value is going to be, we'll start basically from the uh, the last letter, like it was basically H E. So the E's opposite value will start with that. So W F. So it's W F is going to be the cipher text for H E. Number next, let's see. Next is the L X again. We will check all these three rules, like the last three rules, same row, same column, or different column and row. LX, let's see, LX. So if we see L, where is L? L is right here. X, X is right here. They are not in the same row, not in the same column. So of course, they will be in the diagonal, if you see. They are in the diagonal wise. Now, opposite diagonal. This is the opposite diagonal, you can see here. And of course, we'll start from the last one, UP. So now, LX will be replaced with U P. Okay, next is going to be L O. So let's have a look. L is right here. O. O is right here. So if you see here, it's not same row, not a same column. So diagonal L all the way to diagonal. And the opposite diagonal is this. You can see the opposite diagonal. So it's going to be the N S like as you mentioned from start from this so l o will be uh, will be replaced with n s so what's going to be our cipher text over cipher text for hello or whatever you want to name it cipher text is going to be w f u p n s that's the cipher text to calculate it just to give you idea for example let's say just to give you how the other two conditions can be used for example let's say for example, if the value would be, let's say, uh, it was, let's say, MS, 
for example, MS. You need to calculate the cipher text for MS. So M, as you see here, M and S both are in the same row. If they are the same row, what we do? We actually replace them with the letter on the rightmost side, if they are in the same row. So if they are in the same row, M and S, right letter is P. So for M is going to be P. And for S, we will actually go, do circular, like circle wise L, like circular L. So PL is basically the ciphertext for that. It's basically um, this one, like that was the condition because both uh, pair was in the same row. If it would be in the same column, let's say, uh, for example, the values K and M. So we actually get the letter below. So for example, K and M, the letter below is F and V. That's the way. So this is basically called the substitution box of play fair cipher. Uh, we will have a small assignment as well where we will see how we can actually calculate uh, these, the plain text out of this cipher text. Let's say if receiver received this plain uh, cipher text, how they can actually calculate the plain text back. We will discuss that in over class assignment. Okay. Okay. The second part of uh, classical or convention scheme, if you see here, uh, we have discussed substitution cipher, Caesar and the play, uh, play fair. The second part is called uh, transposition cipher. We'll discuss the row uh, transposition, what is that, and the permutation scheme. So first of all, the definition of transposition cipher, as I mentioned earlier, transposition cipher is basically where we rearrange, we rearrange, or you can say interleave, interleave bits, or you can also do it for characters as well. Okay, for bits or characters. Again, no substitution. No substitution. We don't use the substitute letter. We don't actually replace the letter. Like we don't use a replacement. We just rearrange the bits depending upon the key. So let's see what, how we can get it done. Let's say we have a row substitution cipher. Let's say plain text is, for example, this is your plain text. For example, it is welcome, welcome to class for example that's our plain text message welcome to class and uh, we need to actually calculate the cipher text for that okay and again for row position the row transposition cipher you will be provided a key which is going to be a numeric value so key is going to be a numeric value for example our key is three two four five one so now please remember uh, in the in the row transposition cipher what's going to happen if your key is of five numbers so you have to create five by five mat matrix uh we'll, we'll see how we can do that uh okay the first step is what we're going to do is we will write down the number on the top the like the key number which is three two four five one this is our first row of the matrix then we will start writing over plain text. The plain text is welcome, W-E-L-C-O-M-E, -E, welcome to C-L-A-S-S, -S, class. Now the problem is gonna be here. If you see, we are left with this part. And other than that, let's say if I just fit, fit it with a dummy value, this is a dummy value, okay? But now again, the matrix is, four by four you see one two three four uh it's like sorry it's four by five like we have five columns but four rows we need to make it five by five like depending upon the key if you have a six bit keys it should be six by six seven seven by seven so i'm just putting the dummy values all the x here for example just for the ease all x all the dummy values now you can see five rows one two three four five and five column one two three four five so that would be easy for your, um, you can say, uh, the um, receiver to decrypt it, of course. Now, how to write it down? Now, we will write it down, I mean, in the higher order, like how, what will be the cipher text? So cipher text will be written like from numbering from lower to high, low to high, like we will start from one to five. So let's start writing from here. So the first is, o c x x number two number two is here 
डबल ई ए एक्स ओके नेक्स्ट नंबर थ्री डब्ल्यू एम डब्ल्यू एम एल एक्स नंबर फोर एल टी एस एक्स नंबर फाइव सी ओ एस एक्स सो दैट इज योर साइफर टेक्स्ट by using substitution cipher so what we did we didn't do anything we didn't replace any of the letter we just rearrange them jumble up them or interleave them in our assignment again uh, we will learn the decryption of row transposition cipher how receiver can decrypt that when receiver will get that next is the permutation what is permutation permutation is again we permute the data interleave the data based on the bits for example let's say the plain text is plain text is welcome so welcome is your plain text for example and uh, let's say the key is assume that key is again in permutation the key size will be equal to plain text so plain text must be equal to key if you use permutation please remember it pt plain text so the key is going to be let's say 3 2 6 Four one seven five. For example, that's the key. Seven bit, the key. Like we have the seven characters. Now, first thing is we will put the numbering on the top of our plain text. Three, four, five, six, seven. Now write down the key here. Three, two, six, four, one, seven, and five. Now we will start putting the letters based on this pattern. So the letter on the third. What is the third letter? L. L will come here. Letter two. Letter six, letter fourth, letter one, letter seven, letter five. So here we go. This is over cipher text. Again, in the in the class assignment, we'll see how we can decrypt that. How receiver can deinterleave, or you can say depermute them. Okay. So this is basically uh, what about over. substitution scheme we discussed that and this is the transposition scheme that we have discussed now let's let's move on to over this part let me tell you where exactly we are right now so if you see here we have discussed the classical technique substitution transposition and all that stuff so let me quickly give you an idea about modern techniques uh the difference between stream cipher and the block cipher we will discuss des aes and all that stuff in our part 2 okay Okay, the uh, symmetric encryption techniques or symmetric encryption can be uh, can be performed in two ways. One is called stream cipher, stream cipher, and second is called uh, block cipher. So please remember one thing here: stream cipher is basically uh, where we encrypt the data bit by bit, bit by bit. So we encrypt the data bit by bit. Like again, it's basically for small messages, small uh, you can say small messages or small data. In fact, block cipher is the one which we most widely use. What we do, we actually divide the plain text, plain text into equal size blocks, or you can say chunks, and then encrypt. them block by block block by block so we encrypt the data block by block that's block cipher uh again like encryption will be performed on bit by bit level like inside block cipher there is a stream cipher in fact but typically uh in block let's say you have a data of let's say 1000 bits we will not perform the encryption for all the 1000 bit what we do we divide them let's say we make it two chunks 500 bits 500 bit or maybe 250 250 250 we'll make uh, four blocks right here and then process the data or encrypt the data in block cipher like the algorithm all these algorithms des triple des aes blowfish all these algorithms are basically the block cipher algorithms uh, and all these block cipher algorithm they use a common structure of encryption which is called fiestel cipher structure uh, we will discuss fiestel cipher structure and the other encryption the symmetric encryption algorithms in the next class so uh, see you guys in next class and if you guys will have any questions anything please send me an email uh, or we we can discuss in our face to face class so see you guys in class thank you